two, one, two, three, four. <laughs> You're not allowed to go up this way or access the residence or anything. So we were hopeful that this would never happen, but that we'd be somewhat prepared. And There you go. There you go. Save as much as we can, carpet-wise. Unfortunately, uh, with the hurricanes, it doesn't really surprise me. God won't me to do So I can't do nothing. It is heartbreaking. It's very, very personal. Being with other people who are also victims. I feel like we're coming back stronger and louder than ever. The sounds of this beach town are very different today. Silent. Our department. Aside from search teams like this one led by Carl Randolph. You guys are doing strong work. Strong work today. They're working with FEMA as more than a thousand searchers come through the streets of Fort Myers Beach. Sometimes crawling through tight spaces, and even several days after the storm, they're still finding people. So the people are uh, resilient, uh, they're proud, and um, a lot of them do not want to leave their homes with no power and you know no utilities. They still w want to stay. Fire department. They help make sure holdouts get supplies they need. In some cases, those who stayed did not survive. It is critical that we get to them as soon as possible. The work is hard. They're suddenly away from family, now in a community dealing with their worst of times. I joined this team in 2005, so I have seen this before. Uh, unfortunately, uh, with the hurricanes, it doesn't really surprise me to see what, what I'm seeing now. But surprising or not, it takes a toll, not only in seeing a community decimated, but in seeing its impact on people. We do have peer counselors that are out and walking around and uh, integrating with the teams. Randolph says that kind of help is essential. We need a, a, a mentally healthy, mental, emotionally healthy team in order to get this type of work done. And uh, we rely on each other a lot. And the people, the local leaders and law enforcement are depending on them to help make sure people out here are safe. Yellowstone. There are some lines. And you folks enjoy your time here. You just awesome. don't mind waiting in. We're about to have a blast. Even though Yellowstone National Park opened at 8 a.m., some people were in line at the west entrance a couple hours before. We've been making the best of it, just having a good time with it. Same for the south entrance. After Yellowstone was closed for a week because of flood damage, these lines show people couldn't wait to get back in. It's also our 150th anniversary. And so it would have been a shame if we couldn't have uh, opened up some of the park. And um, I'm seeing lots of happy faces. Ooh. Those faces only got happier oh, look at it. when Old Faithful seemed to welcome everyone back. Ooh, no <laughs> this was the first time Tracy Schmidt and her kids ever saw Old Faithful in person. We were supposed to come two years ago and the park got closed because of COVID. This time, though, their timing was just right. It's so special. Yeah, it's so cool to be able to do this as a family and to be able to give them this experience. It's something everyone should try and see once, which is why Tracy Sampson, who lives in Roy, Utah, was worried his son visiting from Georgia would miss it until Yellowstone opened just in time. We had reservations up here all, all week long, and so, you know, it, we're just excited we got one day before he has to leave in the morning. It is a special place, from the landscapes to the wildlife to just that feeling there's something bigger than us. No doubt about it. It's something worth feeling, no matter how long the line is. For them to be able to see this stuff is awesome. Students filing in, please grab a seat. It's a surreal moment for 22-year-old Thomas Schwab. Good morning, Murray. It's crazy to be here after so long. Taking the stage at Murray High School, where he graduated four years ago as valedictorian, but the road wasn't easy. I would sleep outside, I'd sleep in bushes. Schwab was homeless. When I was homeless, almost no one knew. Oh my Lord, to think this is in the school. Right. <laughs> and today many students know the struggle. We have, uh, I think about 50 homeless, registered homeless students at the school. That's just the ones that we know about. Quinn Lindy is the principal at Murray High School. He says the need for on-campus social services is greater than ever. I think the days are gone where schools are, are simply providing academic supports for students. That, that is an area we need, we need to hone in on, but 
but we need to be all inclusive. These were full. It's why Pamela Anderson opened the Spartan Closet, a safe space to get food, clothing, toiletries, and more. I'm looking right now at these hangers. This is one week. This is only one week of people who came in. In the next few months, Murray High will move the closet to a bigger space, but ultimately the principal wants a full service student wellness center like the one at Hillcrest High School. So this is our food pantry right here. When Hillcrest was rebuilt in 2018, Principal Gregory Levitt pushed for a dignified space dedicated to struggling families. Today, it's called the Hillcrest Free Market. It is so important because we have so many students that are fluctuating between poverty and homeless. The Hillcrest Free Market is a full service food pantry with fresh meat and produce. It's a clothing center with washers and dryers for families to use. This is available to them once a week by appointment when they need to use it. It's also a place where students who may be living at the homeless shelter can safely take a shower. At least gives them a sense of, okay, I can start fresh today. How many people are using this? 200 right now uh, are using the food pantry. The showers and the laundry facilities is about a quarter of that right now. Back in the Murray School District at Hillcrest Junior High. This has been a huge trial and error process for us. Social worker Courtney Nolan started Hillcrest Home Goods this year. I've had a couple of kiddos that have come in that like haven't eaten in days and they just want like a warm meal and it's ramen. 46% of students at Hillcrest Junior High are considered low income. Nolan says families who were on the financial bubble before the COVID pandemic now struggle every day to make ends meet. I think we still have a huge stigma in our country in general, just talking about how we do struggle and it's okay to struggle. And I think we're just really trying to make this a inviting place so that kids can share their story and make sure that we are taking care of each other. This is everywhere. What's happening in the Murray School District is happening in schools all over Utah. We're not focused just on academics anymore. We can't because we can't teach those kids unless they have those basic needs met. Fortunately, in many districts, community partners have stepped in to help with donations. But is that enough? All of you are going through your own struggles. Thomas Schwab is using his story to bring awareness to homeless students. And look at everyone you can see. He hopes his efforts will inspire others to look within their own communities. Do you know what they're going through? And offer to help. Everyone's human. Everyone has a life and feelings and deserves to be treated well and deserves to be taken care of by the community. In Murray, Shara Park, KSL 5 News.